Well, good morning, Temple Baptist Church. I pray that you are well today and ready to worship God. It was so good to take communion last Sunday for the first time since January. And surprisingly, maybe, with it being so different, I talked to two of the visitors we had for the first time, and they were very impressed with the whole service. So I think we had a good time in the Lord yesterday and I pray that we'll continue to have a good experience by coming to church. Uh, if you can't make it to church, I'm glad that we have something you can witness and uh, see online and that you won't be missing out on God's Word totally. Before we start, do you have any prayer requests today? Uh, if you do, keep those in mind as we pray. We won't, don't want to neglect praying for our sick and our bereaved and for those with other problems. So, so let's pray. Our Father, we come to you today just thanking you for your blessings to us, for your much care over us, and for your help us each day, for providing for us all the needs that we have. Lord, I just pray that you will continue to lead our church, lead our pastors, and everyone who has a part in the services, Lord. Lead them in a special way that, Lord, your name will be glorified, your name will be praised, and your name will be honored. And that's what we want to do today, Lord. Remember those that uh, have had the virus or still having problems with it, especially the Blue Ridge Police Chief, Johnny Searcy, Pray your Lord you'd be with him. I understand you're still in the hospital. And for any others that we might know of that had the virus or other problems, Lord, and other sicknesses. I know there's more sickness going around other than just the virus. But we thank you, Lord, for being with us and watching over us and caring for us. And especially, Lord, we thank you for your love for us. And help us to worship you today, Lord, in a way that be pleasing to you. And we'll just not forget to thank you for all your blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, <clears throat> our lesson today is entitled, Committed to the Word. And we're in Psalm 119, verses 1 through 11. And we'll break those down as we go. Let me ask you a question. And in our age group that we're in, we're in the 70 and up group, uh, what advice would you include if you wrote a how-to book on growing older? Think about where would you go for information? If you're like me, and uh, all you have to do is buy something from somebody and you'll be on their list of sending you stuff, new stuff, all the time. And there are many books on just about any subject you choose. And we have to remember when it comes to instructions, we want reliable information. Uh, God has revealed Himself to us through His written Word, and He is the only source and authority worth listening to. Have you ever sat in a class and discovered that you know more about the subject than the instructor does? I can't recall when I have ever done that, but I've heard of people that did. Uh, and when I've, a lot of times when I go online or something to order something, I read, I read so much information that turned out to be false. So we have to be careful about what we uh, order, what we read, what we look at, and check it out to make sure that it's authentic. Uh, you know, I've heard recently of some states with a shortage of certified teachers, uh, and they are offering emergency teaching certificates, allowing unqualified teachers to teach in public schools. How do you think that would work out? 
having unqualified teachers teaching in public school. I doubt the kids would learn very much. Uh, I remember when I was growing up, of course when I was growing up, we didn't have the good schools like we have today. But I remember hearing of teachers who never uh, graduated from high school being given a teaching certificate after they took a test. But we need to consider carefully what authority we look to for gaining eternal life. Uh, we have that authority in the Bible. God has revealed himself through his written word and he is the only source and authority worth listening to. So we'll start today in Psalm 119, verses 1 through 4. It says, Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with the whole heart. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. Thou hast commanded us to keep the precepts diligently. These verses are talking about what it means to live a blameless life. And uh, of course we all know that uh, we're, we're going to sin. That's our human nature. But there's lots of things that we can do if we get in God's Word. And uh, Verse 1 says, Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. To be undefi undefiled means unblemished, whole and complete. And I know in some uh, Bibles and some people translate the word blessed as happy. You could say happy are the undefiled in the way. I believe to be happy we have to devote ourselves to the law of the Lord and let His Word guide us. I don't know how many times I've uh, thought of God's Word when I was in business, when I was still working, and things would come up. And uh, if I hadn't had God's Word, I'd probably got, got off track. Uh, Verse 2 says, Happiness comes by obedience. When we obey the Lord's direction, we will not regret it. And there are two characteristics of people who live in daily obedience. Number one, <clears throat> we devote ourselves to keeping His testimonies, charges He intends for us to keep every day. Number two, we seek the Lord. We obey His directives in keeping with our eagerness to seek Him. <clears throat> in verse 3, they also do no iniquity. They walk in His ways. When we walk in His ways, we will do no iniquity. We will think about our walk with Him and develop habits that reflect our devotion to Him. It will make us want to do nothing that He considers wrong. I found that to be true so many times. Uh, if we will devote ourselves to Him, He will help us see the iniquity before we participate in it. Verse 4 says, Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. God gave us clear commands. He is the authority. We are wise if we use God's command to guide us as we serve Him. How has God's Word provided guidance for you over the years? Most of us older people uh, can recall things in our life, I'm sure, where if it wasn't for God, we would have been on the wrong path. And one of the things that we need to do is how often we study God's Word is an indication of how we will grow in Him. You can't read the Bible one verse put it aside, or one chapter and put it aside. I think that's all you need. We have to study His Word every day. And when you think along those lines, what happens when you starve yourself of food? 
I know a lot of people are on diets. A lot of people uh, do a lot of things, exercise, walk. And if you don't get some food, no matter what you do, if you're trying to lose weight or whatever, if you don't get some food, you will soon die. And there's no doubt about that. And I think that's kind of the same with God's Word. If we starve ourselves of spiritual food, we don't need to starve ourselves of spiritual food if we continue to walk with Him and try to do what He has us to do. We will dry up and we'll pull away from God and try to make it on our own. In verse 4 and I mean, verse 5 through 8, says, Oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes. Then shall I not be ashamed when I have respect unto all thy commandments. I will praise thee with uprightness of heart when I shall have learned thy righteous judgments. I will keep thy statutes. Oh, forsake me not utterly. God's word assures us that we can be set free from shame. And I think when the psalmist was writing this, he, was, he realized that he had some growing to do. He wasn't to the point that uh, he wasn't uh, maybe ashamed of some things in his life. And when you think along those lines, just think a minute about Satan. Shame is one of Satan's greatest weapons. He uses shame to keep us down. To make us feel unworthy to worship God. To, he tries to make us feel unworthy of God's love. And I'm sure we can all relate to that. Sometimes we doubt that God loves us. But all we've got to do is think of the cross. And that will take care of that. In the Old Testament, in the ancient Israelites where they lived, they had a culture in which people lived in fear of being put to shame. They strived, strived to, be, to live with honor. When you think of that, people striving to live with honor, is that feeling in today's culture the same? Well, if you ever get out of the house, you'll know not to the same degree as a person in the Old Testament. We might <clears throat> feel embarrassed sometimes of the things that we say or things that we do, but we quickly get over it. Uh, I remember saying something to somebody one time, I was one of my kids or or who it was, but I said something to, to the fact that they need to be ashamed. And they said, well, just get over it. And that's the attitude of a lot of people today. When we have something come into our life that's not good, not according to the scripture, it's hard to get over it if you're a Christian. And that makes me remember back when I was growing up, All it took was a handshake to close a deal. No matter what you were buying, whether it was a mule, a plow, or anything, a car, anything. When you shook hands with a person that you were buying from, that sealed the deal. That wasn't any there wasn't any question about, well let me go get my lawyer and we'll write it up. I know, I've had no from experience recently of having to take care of some business and uh, I went to the courthouse and they told me, well, you've got to get you a lawyer and do this. And it, to me, a, a handshake would have done the job. But today's society, you don't do that. you got to have your lawyers, two or three lawyers, and two or three people to witness it and all of this stack of papers and of course, you always get a big bill for it too. So, uh, 
it's getting, don't want to get political, but if we didn't let lawyers go to the White House, we'd be a lot better off, I think. In verse 7 it says, I will praise thee with uprightness of heart, when I shall have learned thy righteous judgments. We can see that we can worship God anywhere when we follow His judgments. The more we know the Lord, the more we love Him and want to praise Him. I don't know how you could uh, be an active uh, Christian and not love the Lord more every day. And it brings up the thought, how can we avoid treating God's Word like helpful hints rather than commands to be diligently kept? Of course, we know we have to set our minds and hearts on living out the truth of His Word. But I've heard Roger say it, I believe, uh, more than one time. I uh, know it's somebody that I know said, uh, God's Ten Commandments, they're not suggestions, they're commandments, and we need to go by them. You know, I was <clears throat> thinking along the lines of what it would be like if I didn't have the Lord in my life, and when I thought of that, <clears throat> I thought about the song, Without Him. I'm sure you all know that, but I'm going to read the first verse. It says, Without Him, I could do nothing. Without Him, I'd surely fail. Without Him, I would be drifting like a ship without a sail. And the more I think each day of, on God's Word and where all I'm doing and where, I'm, where we're going and all, uh, that comes back to me. What in the world would we do without Him? We would be totally lost. That's what it would really boil down to. Without Him, we could do nothing. And I thank God that we can do something as long as we're in His Word and we try to do the things that He has called each of us to do. <clears throat> that brings us to... Uh, Verses 9 through 11 says, Wherewith shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. With my whole heart I have sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. That verse 11 I've heard, I don't tell how many times used in uh, scripture and the lessons now. When we think of that, God's Word keeps us from allowing sin to control our lives. I don't know how we, any of us, made it as a young person if we didn't know the Lord. I was glad that God called me at 24 years old, reached down and touched me, and I accepted the Lord Jesus as my Savior. Young people will be tempted by passions, ambitions, and interests that can lead them to stumble into a sinful lifestyle. Inexperience can lead young people to make foolish choices. We see that all the time. Many families today lack a solid foundation formed by biblical principles. How many Christian families did you see or hear of participating in the recent riots, looting, burning, and killing? I don't think there was any. If any participate in them, I would question their salvation experience. The psalmist had dedicated himself in verse 10 to seeking the Lord. He knew he needed the Lord to help him. 
He did not want to drift away from the Lord's commands. And that's one of the reasons that we have to keep ourselves daily in His Word. Because well, it don't take but just a little bit slip. You can get away from His command and get back into sin. How easy is it to let other things come into your life and we wander away from His commands? You know, I don't know what God's purpose was for having this virus in our lives. I know one thing, it's kept a lot of people from coming to church. And they have good reason in a lot of cases. we got to do the things that we're told to do to prevent us having the virus. A lot of people, I guess, are saying that, uh, well, I'm going to go to church and God will take care of the virus. I think he gives us common sense sometimes to know that if you get exposed to the virus, uh, you're taking in your life in your own hands. But I've also heard that uh, from our convention <clears throat> that probably when the virus is over with or when we get the vaccine to cure it, that there'll be 20% of the people who were coming to church previously will not come back. They got out of the habit of going to church for a year or more. And it's so much easier to sit by your TV or your computer, whatever you use to hear the sermons and the uh, worship service as. Sit there with your pajama, in your pajamas with a cup of coffee or whatever in your hand and enjoy the church service. I found out that the more people that I see in the church when I'm worshiping, the more the more better, I guess you could say, that I enjoy the service. I like to be with God's people. Uh, I love to shake hands and hug and all that, but just to be there is a lot better to me. I can feel the Spirit a lot better than I can sitting at home. Verse 11 says, Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. When you put something into your pantry, you put it where it's readily available when needed. I still have to look for a lot of stuff in the pantry. That is what we need to do with God's word. Hide it in our heart so it is readily available when needed. In the Old Testament, God's people had been taught to maintain a high regard for His written Word. They treated scrolls with tremendous respect. You know, uh, I, found, I find myself a lot of times, since I live alone, I find myself I'll eat breakfast or lunch or whatever on the couch while I'm uh, watching TV or something. And when I'm eating, it's a, just a, a reaction. I do not set anything on my Bible when I'm eating. Not a plate, a saucer, or anything to drink or anything. Uh, I, that's how much respect I have for God's Word. Uh, I know a lot of people, if you don't know the Lord, you don't have any respect for anything, much less uh, God's Word. Moses instructed his people before they entered the promised land to take small pieces of scripture and place them in tiny containers and wear them on their hands and forehead. This was a way to show that they treasured God's word. Do you think today that people treasure God's word? A lot of people do. And a lot of people have no idea what God's Word says. The psalmist placed the treasure of God's Word in his heart. That's what he said. Though thy word have I hid in mine heart, that I might not sin against thee. <clears throat> the 
more we read God's Word, the more we treasure what it teaches us. Respect the Bible. Respect God's Word. It is holy. Say that again. Respect the Bible. Respect God's Word. It is holy. And we don't need to trade it as just another book. It's the book that we need to know. It's been a short lesson today, but I thank you for letting me come and uh, visit with you and uh, bring out some thoughts that uh, we need every day in our life. We need to remember God's Word and what it means to each of our lives. How it will help us each day to live a life that would be pleasing to you, to Him. So let's pray. Our Father, we thank you for your word and its power to keep us from, from us from walking in a different way than we should. It's the most powerful thing that we'll ever read. And Lord, we thank you for that. Help us, Lord, to keep your commandments. Help us, Lord, to remember, to recognize, Lord, who you are, what you are, and how much you love us. Lord, we know that your love for us was shown on the cross. And Father, we just thank you and praise you for your son Jesus going to the cross in our place and paying the awful price that he paid for our sins. Lord, I pray that you'll continue to lead us, be with our church, be with our pastors, Help us, Lord, to do the thing that is pleasing to you. And, Lord, help us to remember that although no one else might see, God knows everything that goes on in our life. And we pray, Lord, that he will remind us each day if we study his word and look into his laws, that, Lord, we have what we need to do to stay away from sin. I know we sin daily, but, Lord, if we... We'll look into your word. It'll help us each day to do what you'd have us to do. And Lord, it'll help us to have a, show you the honor, the glory, and the love that we need to, to you. And we praise you, Lord, for these things. In Jesus' name, amen.